The plan is for the Ares rocket to take astronauts to and from the International Space Station and in time take them to the moon, even to build long-term outposts. But a presidential committee has ruled that the program is too expensive. Almost certainly the White House is going to decide uh, to terminate the program. American astronauts won't be returning to the moon anytime soon. NASA has already built the rockets and spent $10 billion on the project, but Barack Obama's new budget doesn't include any money for lunar exploration. As part of his budget cuts, President Obama has cancelled plans to put American astronauts back on the moon. He said the scheme was over budget, behind schedule and lacking in innovation. One small step for man, but a leap too far for a cash-strapped America. Rather than revisiting the lunar landings of 40 years ago, President Obama says the money would be better spent on new challenges. The dream of putting man back on the moon may be just that again, a dream, after the US president slashed the NASA program. The cut was just one of many proposed in Barack Obama's budget plan as he tries to stem the country's historic budget deficit. The debt is expected to reach more than $1.5 trillion this year alone. North America correspondent Lisa Miller reports. It's 40 years since man first walked on the moon and the chances of it happening again are smaller than ever. We simply cannot continue to spend as if deficits don't have consequences, as if waste doesn't matter, as if the hard-earned tax dollars of the American people can be treated like monopoly money. Predictably, the excuse for cancelling Constellation was the same old, it's too expensive nonsense. The polar opposites between now and 2004 are striking. When the project was first announced, it was hyped about being cheaper than the shuttle project and half the price of the previous moon missions. Now it's way too expensive. For those keeping score, by 2010, the Constellation project had already spent 9 billion US dollars. In 2005, Former NASA Administrator Mike Griffin had estimated that the whole project would eventually cost 55% of the cost of the previous moon program. When we do the math, this works out to be 74 billion 250 million US dollars. Subtracting the 9 billion already spent, that means that a further 65 odd billion is required. Previously, NASA has spent $135 billion in 21st century currency on the Apollo project and another $145 billion on the shuttle project. And yet somehow, an extra $65 billion to complete the project is too much. Now, there are alternatives to the ARIES project on the drawing board. One proposal is to use the proven shuttle stack. The proposal is as follows. You've seen the space shuttle on the launching pad with its huge external tank and solid rocket boosters. Suppose we take off the shuttle and replace it with a hollowed out tube containing the equipment. Like the shuttle, this cargo container has a set of engines of its own powered by the external tank. Two of these shuttle derived launches would be necessary. One to launch Orion and one to launch Altar. Both capsules would carry a miniature Earth departure stage to make the TLI burn. The altar would perform its TLI burn first and enter lunar orbit in advance. The Orion would follow and subsequently dock with altar in lunar orbit. Now, this side-mounted launcher doesn't have the same lifting capacity as the Ares 5, so the new LEM would need to be stripped down by a few tons. Still, the stripped-down altar would still be more massive than the Apollo Lunar Module. But once again, NASA's plans were to return to the Moon using the same space shuttle technology that they've had since the 1970s. The Ares used enlarged versions of the shuttle's SRBs and external tank. They also would have used newer J2 engines, which obviously were previously used on the Saturn. The backup launcher is also obviously the same technology. It even retains the basic overall design of a shuttle stack. Another alternative to the Ares comes from the direct team who have proposed a new series of rockets called Jupiter. 
not to be confused with Werner von Braun's Jupiter C. Like the Ares and the HLV, the Jupiter uses the exact same shuttle tank, the exact same SRBs, and the exact same shuttle main engines. Among other things, the direct team says that the benefits of this rocket include a manned circumlunar flight as early as 2013. Yes, 2013. And this is using a rocket derived from space shuttle technology. In short, there is not really any new technology developed for this project. Instead, they are just recycling the old technology that they've had for 30 years. Which brings us back to the question, why didn't they return sooner if the technology to return was sitting in their lap all this time? Well, it seems two days after receiving their letter, President Obama half answered the cries of Armstrong, Lavelle and Cernan. His proposal was basically to skip the moon and head straight off onto Mars and even asteroids. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. And by 2025, we expect new spacecraft designed for long journeys to allow us to begin the first ever crewed missions beyond the moon into deep space. So we'll start We'll start by sending astronauts to an asteroid for the first time in history. By the mid-2030s, I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. And a landing on Mars will follow. And I expect to be around to see it. I understand that some believe that we should attempt a return to the surface of the moon first, as previously planned. But I, I, I just have to say, uh, pretty bluntly here, we've been there before. Buzz has been there. There's a lot more of space to explore and a lot more to learn when we do. So I believe it's more important to ramp up our capabilities to reach and operate at a series of increasingly demanding targets while advancing our technological capabilities with each step forward. And that's what this strategy does. And that's how we will ensure that our leadership in space is even stronger in this new century than it was in the last. Okay, first we can't go back to the moon because it's too expensive. Now we're not going back because of being there, done that. I think we can safely say that obviously it's not a matter of money. A manned Mars trip would obviously be considerably more expensive than a moonshot. And using the old saying, been there, done that, as an excuse not to go back to the moon, is hardly justifiable. 